ICT traders think you need a million time frames to trade. They are simply wrong. Using the weekly range and one hour time frame, I can make you profitable. Stick around till the end of this video and I'm going to show you exactly how I do so. Let's not waste any time and get started on exactly what I mean by this. So what I mean by needing one time frame is that we are trading a weekly range. We're trading a specific range which lines up well with the hourly time frame. This is what this whole video focuses on, okay? The whole of this video is focused on the hourly time frame, working around the weekly framework. So without wasting any time, let's dive into this. If you look on your chart here, we are on the weekly time frame, right? All we need is some weekly framework. Let's outline what we have here. There's buy side liquidity up here, and we've been trending upwards, as you can see. I'm going to dive into firstly this week here and then this week here on the hourly time frame and show you exactly what I mean by this. So let's drop down here. You can see Sunday's opening at 5 p.m. What we anticipate here is an open low high close scenario because we are bullish. So on this weekly time frame, what we are expecting is an open low high close open low high close now i speak about this a lot if you're familiar with my videos it is seriously everything you need and exactly why i'm telling you one time frame is all you need let's go on to the hourly so we mark up 5 p.m sunday price opens at this point here on sunday okay this is our weekly opening price and we use our weekly opening price for overbought or oversold conditions let me ask you this, if we're expanding towards a target and want to see buy side liquidity reached, what do we anticipate weekly price? Where do we want to buy? We want to be buying below weekly price or we want to be buying at weekly price. If we're expanding, of course, price is not going to come back down all the way. But at the start of the week, this is where you want to be buying. So zoom into this bit of price action here. You can see we wick up. This is a fake move traders who are already anticipating longs and are so desperate to get in traders who suffer from FOMO which is something I talk about in my tweets a lot there's a lot of you who would have been long in this even though we're in a premium market so the actual traders who make money wait for a drop down below Sunday's opening price now we wait for structure okay what am I exactly looking for here well I want to see closes above down close candles to confirm that we are bullish if you take a look here, you can see we create two down close candles on Tuesday, London Open. Now, what do we know about London Open already? This is going to be a very structured video, so I'm going to walk you through this step by step. Because if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you're not yet profitable and you can really be profitable with one time frame. What do we anticipate London Open to do when we're bullish? We anticipate it to create the low of the day, which is exactly what happens here. If you look, 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. is London. You can see we drop down, creating two down close candles on the hourly time frame, which also takes out sell side liquidity, right? So sell side liquidity is swept down here. We create these two down close candles, and then now I'm looking to close above one of them. Okay, you can see the body of this candle gets closed above with the 5 a.m. candle. Okay. This confirms our change in the state of delivery. After this happens, the algorithm starts delivering buy side. Okay, that is exactly what we're looking for. Either a break in market structure or a change in the state of delivery. Once we close above this, this becomes our support level, if you want to call it that. Any wick into this should hold a support and deliver buy side liquidity. And that's exactly what happens here. You can see 6 a.m. candle opens up, creates a low into the body of this down close candle which swept liquidity and then rallies higher now we're on the hourly time frame and remember i told you this is all we need when you're taking entries on the hourly time frame you don't have to be so strict with kill zones because you're on such a time frame that kill zones are just when price should when you should expect price to move sorry okay so if we're trading on the hourly time frame there's a there's a kill zone window of about three hours. Okay, so the hourly is not going to move all that much towards your target in just three hours. 
So what we can do when we trade in the hourly time frame is enter just outside or around a kill zone. Okay, if an entry presents itself around a kill zone, we will take that. So what I want you to look at here is we have a fair value gap which gets traded above. Price doesn't come back into the top of this fair value gap. But if you take your eyes to the left here, a fair value gap which was created at another key time actually does get used on the other side. Okay, why did we use this fair value gap here? Because this was used multiple times to send price higher and then traded through, we broke through. Once we come back on the other side, price wicks in. And where does it wick into? If I remove these for a second, keep that in mind. If I remove them for a second, you can see we have a fair value gap. That's an entry right there. That's a classic entry right there. There's one of your buys. Okay. One buy down here, a second buy up here. And then we start to rally. Remember, this is throughout the week. Okay. There's Tuesday. If I move that to midnight open. And now let's show you Wednesday. Okay, this is what I mean by you need one time frame, and that is all you need. Find an expanding week on an expanding pair, then the hourly time frame is all you need. This will make you profitable if you use it correctly. What does Wednesday do? Well, we anticipate again, let me copy this line. We anticipate an open, a low, and a high, and then a close. So what can we anticipate from our opening price, which is here? We can anticipate a low being made, right? Where would the low be logically made into? Okay, so we're going to make a low in an open low high close scenario. But where is it logical for that low to be made? Either into a higher time frame PD array or a higher time frame liquidity pool. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. You can see we get this here. A liquidity pool from the previous day is swept and into what is this? A fair value gap created during the PM session. If I extend that out in time, you can see price wicks into there during what time? Look at look at the axes on the bottom, 2 a.m. again. Because when we're expanding, London does what? London creates the low of the day. You can see here it does exactly that. And then once again, if I remove our opening price, keep that in mind. Down close candle. Closed above. Okay. This is all on the hourly time frame. Closed above. Any wick in should do what? Support price to go higher. And then we rally. Let's take your attention to Thursday. Okay. I'm sure you're getting the gist of what this video is about now. Let's go to Thursday. Okay, Thursday, midnight open. Here, remember we're still expanding. Let me make this a colour so it stands out. Now, what did I just outline to you in the previous example? I outlined that price should logically create a low into a key area, right? Look at this key area. Is this not a down close candle? Okay. Did this wick not come down? At a key time, remember I told you London Open is 2 to 5 a.m. Did this wick not come below New York Midnight Open into a previous key level? If you don't want, if that order block's not good enough for you, what's that? That's a fair value gap created at 9 a.m. Okay, really key time. Price misses that, but I'll tell you, go over to your Euro USD chart, and that is an SMT there. Price didn't sweep this low, it made equal lows. Whereas Euro came lower. Okay, so price doesn't need to come back into this fair value gap. Because Euro USD always did. If, you, if you're familiar with SMT, you will understand what I meant there. If not, go onto ICT's channel, find out about SMT or smart money technique. And then you can learn more about that. It's really simple and it's really useful. Okay. Also, do you see how we're building so many confluences here? the bottom of this fair value gap once traded through look where it gets traded through we need to make sure fair value gaps get traded through properly okay you can see it got traded through twice when we come back down into the bottom of it that should be used as support and it gets used as support at 3 a.m okay key times price then rallies 
And then again, late Thursday, come into a down close candle or a series of down close candles, sorry. This is our actual order block because order blocks are a series of down close candles, not just one, not just the last down close candle. <coughs> and then Friday opens up. Friday midnight, what do we do once again? You can see we actually do this at 8 a.m. this time. Now, without even looking, I can tell you this is 8.30 when news hit, okay? So news manipulated below the low, which created at 3 a.m. If we have news, you can sometimes anticipate this. If you don't feel confident in trading then, then you can trade after news, no problem, okay? Here, this down close candle, which is closed above with this up close candle, you can see traded back into, and there's a fair value gap here, okay? So we can take this area here, extend this out of time. It overshoots it a bit, but you wouldn't be in this anyway because news. And then look what happens. Really simple. After news, look what happens. Down close candle printed before news. News closes above it. We come down, reaccumulate inside here and a fair value gap, and then send it higher. And that ends the week. So let's recap exactly what we've done here. You can see the weekly open, we dip below. Come into a new day, dip below. Come into a new day, dip below. Come into a new day, dip below. And rally higher every single time. This is what I mean by you need one time frame. The hourly time frame is really powerful. Just in case you didn't believe me, let's dive into this week here, Monday the 8th of July. The hourly time frame once again. This is our Sunday open. Now, on expansion weeks, we can anticipate either Monday, if we're already in a market maker buy model, okay, if we're already in that buy model, then we can anticipate Monday, either creating the low of the week or Tuesday will. Here, which day creates the low of the week? You can see, if just in case, you could take scalps inside here, by the way, that's very tradable. If you wanted to skip Mondays, which a lot of ICT traders do because often there's not much news on Mondays and it can create the opposite end of the weekly range. So if you waited for Tuesday, what do we anticipate again? Let's go to Tuesday midnight. You can see we're below the weekly open as well. We begin to consolidate after dipping below the weekly open and midnight open on Tuesday. We start to consolidate and then Wednesday opens up, okay? But you can see here, Tuesday actually created the low of the week. This is the low of the week. Obviously in hindsight, but we can be anticipating that anyway. When we've dipped below weekly open and midnight open on Tuesday and we begin to rally, you can anticipate that to be the low of the week. So when Wednesday opens up, with that in mind, we anticipate the exact same thing as before. Here is opening price. So below opening price, we want to be a buyer. There's a clear, really simple for value gap just below opening price. <clears throat> and then we move higher, reaccumulate inside here, and then bounce higher again. Wednesday, really nice buying opportunities. You can see when is the low created? Just before London, and we start to rally. That is probably another SMT. Okay, I can't check that right now, but that probably is another SMT. Okay. Wednesday then gives us a continuation inside this re-delivered, rebalanced price range because we deliver buy side, deliver sell side, then deliver buy side once again. This area becomes balanced because if you think about a paintbrush analogy, price is delivered upside, delivered downside, and then delivered upside again. So we don't need to come back down here to deliver this downside because it's already been done in this bit of price action here. Okay, We then begin to expand again. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday does the exact same thing as before. Just in case you didn't believe me again, look at this. Okay. Thursday does the exact same thing price always does when we expand into a target. Inside the fair value gap, price comes down below New York midnight open, reaccumulates in here, moves higher. Look what happens as well. If we zoom in here, I'm sure you notice a signature I've been banging on about. 2am, candle closes above 
the down close candle here. So this becomes our order block inside of a fair value gap. If I remove the fair value gap, New York Midnight Open, reaccumulated inside of a value gap, close above this. So this starts supporting price. You can see we wick down into the body, about 50% of the body. The algorithm is seeking a dynamic discount price. Okay. And look how we move higher. Really simple. Again, New York opens up 7 a.m. New York time. Look what happens. Where do we reaccumulate inside fair value gaps? Hourly fair value gaps. Hourly fair value gaps and hourly order blocks are the key to unlocking the weekly range. You are telling me this is hard. Does this look hard to you? I really don't think this is hard. I've laid out blueprint here. I've laid out the blueprint for you to become profitable. Okay. This is not hard. We're buying below opening prices on the weekly and the hourly. The weekly is our framework time frame. The hourly is our execution time frame. This is all you need. This one time frame. And I've shown you multiple examples here on an expanding week. Look how easy that was to trade. Okay. And just for, for the sake of doing it, let me show you midnight on Friday. Look what happens once again. Remember, where would we logically create the low of the day into? A fair value gap here. You can see, very simple. Fair value gap from the previous day's range. And here's a little gem for your notebook. This fair value gap that we're looking for the low to be created into is usually in the top half of the previous day's range when we're bullish. And if we're selling short, the bottom half of the previous day's range. Because price doesn't need to come down into 50% of the previous day's range because we're seeking a dynamic discount and a dynamic premium. Dynamic relative to what, you may be asking? Relative to the opening price. Relative to New York Midnight. Because we've got to create that low somewhere. So ask yourself with that, is it more likely we create the low here, like we did, and rally? Or is it more likely we do this and then rally? Okay. Obviously, the first one is more likely. There are scenarios where that second one will happen, but you can judge that by news. Okay. If we've got like a, if we've got power speaking later on in the day, then likely that scenario will happen. But on a normal day, London will create the low of the day. And it's exactly what it does here. It's so simple every single time. Fair value gap. New York may not open them. We want to be buying below opening price. Again, where would the logical price for us to be buying at be? The fair value gap in a previous day's range. Once again, we start expanding. And then New York opens up. If you miss London's move, where can we reaccumulate? Well, this fair value gap overlaps with a previous high. This is when support and resistance work. People think it's because of this being in play, but we all know it only works when it overlaps with a fair value gap. And that's why this holds and we begin to rally into today. Okay, that is exactly what I'm showing you. So once we're expanding towards a target on the weekly chart, this is all you need. This is all you need to be profitable. You can make money, you can pass prop firm challenges just doing this, okay, over and over again. I could show you endless examples of this happening on so many different pairs. Okay. Let me show you, for example, AUD USD. The same thing, even though we're working with tighter ranges in here, I guarantee the same thing is happening. Zooming into this week. Okay, this week over here, when we're anticipating expansion, you've got a weekly range. You can see you've got a range here. Okay. If I reverse this. You've got a range where we have a low to a high and we have a discount. Now you can see Monday creates the low of the week here. Where does Sunday open up? Okay, Sunday opens up here. So this is our Sunday opening. Remember, we want to be buying below or at this opening. Okay, so let's move over, if I get rid of this, to Monday. Monday opens up and it's choppy. Remember I said you can skip Mondays. So what does Tuesday do? We can anticipate Tuesday to create the low of the week on Monday will. Monday did here. We rally up. And 
there's a fair value gap here, which is a really nice entry actually at 10 a.m., a really key time. There's a nice entry here for you to be a buyer, and then we rally from there on the, all on the hourly time frame. Okay, let's show you Wednesday. If we go to Wednesday midnight during London this time. I mean, uh, New York, sorry. And even London does still create the low of the day. Low of the day rally come right back down into a previous order block, which is fine. You would wait for this expansion. And then on the 15 minute, you could find an entry here if you really wanted to. But I'm teaching you to use one time frame here. Okay, so forget about the 15 minute. You may have missed this entry, which is fine because this candle didn't close above this candle. Okay, so I would have missed this entry and that is fine. You move on to the next day. Okay, let's move on to the next day. Where's Thursday? Thursday opens up and we do the exact same thing. We take the previous candles low and this creates our low of the day. We begin to rally all in here, big wicks. So it's not the cleanest price action. So let's wait for New York. New York opens up. And again, I remember I outlined this even on a choppy week. This works. Where do we reaccumulate before pumping high on Thursday? Right inside this fair value gap. And then we continue higher. And you can see if we're buying below weekly open down here. This was the cleanest entry in my opinion. During New York session on this, we had a big displacement up above this high. Okay. Changing the state of delivery from all of these down close candles. Okay. And I've got too many lines on here. So I'm going to show you this. These down close candles get closed above. We reaccumulate inside a fair value gap as well. And then we rally. Remember this was your open. This was your Sunday open and we're buying below that inside this small bit of price action here. We reaccumulate and then rally throughout the week. So all you have to do is find an expanding week and then stick to that hourly time frame. This gives you so much flexibility as well in your trading because now instead of constantly being on the chart, okay, and being on the chart strictly during kill zones, you can find entries outside of kill zone. We're trading on a high enough time frame that you don't have to be sat inside a kill zone, but a low enough time frame where you can capitalize on a weekly expansion massively. So with that being said, I won't ramble on much longer. But I hope you did enjoy the length of this video in particular. I will dive deeper into this because it's a topic I feel strongly about in the sense that so many people could apply this and become profitable instead of applying every little ICT concept. Okay, so if you do want me to make a part two to this video, then be sure to drop a comment saying part two if you made it this far as well. That would let me know you made it this far and enjoyed it. Okay, so drop a video saying part two if you did make it to the end of this. And thank you as always for watching. Check out the socials. Check out my socials in the description below. There's a link to my mentorship, which is open for a few more days in there. If you want to become my student, that is open. It closes after the next video. So the next video, it won't be open anymore. Join my Telegram. I'm always updating in there. And on Twitter, I'm very active giving psychology tips and ICT trading tips in general. So check out my links down there. If you did enjoy the video, drop a like and drop a comment saying part two. So... With that being said, thank you as always for watching and I will catch you in the next video.